Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef Elizabeth Sercio making homemade bruschetta as a starter, then spaghetti with mussels that will have you craving more. We are cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. So grab a seat, get comfortable. We've got another great menu coming at you. This is your Community Cooking. Hello and welcome to Community Cooking. I am your host, Kirk Lines. In our kitchen today is Chef Elizabeth Sercio. Hi, Chef. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm, Thank I'm you. I'm good. Good to see you again. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, you know, last time we were here, we, uh, we let everyone know you are a private chef, but uh, you're one that comes with an impressive resume. You, you service some, um, some, some pretty uh, famous clients. Yes. Entertainers, Martin <laughs> Lawrence, I think you were saying. Who else? Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. Okay. Uh, Jacqueline Smith. Okay. And I think you, Hillary Clinton. Too? Hillary Clinton. <laughs> All right. That's pretty good. Oh, the Secret Service? The, se the Secret Service. That's a good one. That's a good one to get the Secret Service on your side. Okay. Well, you have brought with you today another fantastic menu. Um, we're going to start off by making spaghetti with a, a sauce of mussels and tomatoes. And then you're also going to do a bruschetta for us as well. Yes. Great, great. And you were you were explaining you you're from Brazil, you're uh, Portuguese Brazilian, and you were saying that this is, uh, while it seems Italian, it, it's actually a very much a Portuguese dish. Yes, it's from Portugal. Okay, this is something that you grew up with. My dad was from Portugal. Okay, all right. So plenty of seafood in Portugal. I know that. Yes. All right. I tell you what. Why don't we start going through some of the ingredients that you're going to use in in this dish in the spaghetti? So I have some garlic, uh, red chili. Fresh um, oregano, oregano, fresh tomato. Okay. I just boil them, take the skin off, take a little the seeds off, and I'm gonna use it. Okay. Yeah. So this is important to say. So you didn't use canned tomatoes for this. I you don't like it because it has too much preservative. Right. Right. You made you made your own. Yeah. And you 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 just put those into boiling water until the skins start to peel. Yes peel off the skins and then take out some seeds and that's what you're left with. Yes. Beautiful. And this here we have some white wine. White wine. And then we've got our pasta and you're using spaghetti today. Yes. Uh, I would imagine you could probably change that with another pasta though. Yeah, okay? we can use a linguine. Linguine would be nice as well. And then we have, of course, the star of our dish, the mussels, correct? And these are also pre-cooked. Yes. And ex why don't you explain how you did that? You have to, when they bring home, you have to rinse them. Because really they well. have a lot of um, sand. And they also have the beard on them too that you have to pull out. Yes. Right. And then you put some olive oil on the pan. Let the oil get very hot. Okay. And then you uh, just jump them in there and put the lid on. So they're going to open and they got, you have this. That's what comes this out. This gold. This is right. And it is every, isn't it? It's, it's a gold. This is delicious right here. This is what's going to make that sauce. Yes. That's what uh, they call it the liquor. Yes. That, that comes from the, the mussels. And it's amazing that this many mussels yielded that much liquid, but they do. Yeah. And it is truly, tr truly delicious. You could put that in a coffee mug and drink it. It's <laughs> that's that that's a gold. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. So let's make our pasta. I would imagine you probably want to get this pasta dropped. Is our water boiling? Yes. I think we are. Yeah. Look at that. Here you are, chef. And is there anything in that water? Yeah, I put some salt and olive oil. Okay, a little so bit, not much. So you do use olive oil, because I know that some chefs say yes, some chefs say no with the, uh, everyone says yes to the salt. You, you need the salt to flavor the, to lay, wow, look at that, to flavor the, uh, the, the, the pasta. But uh, a lot of chefs, some chefs will say no olive oil, some chefs. I like use because but they don't get sticky. Right, sort of coats A little it. bit, not much. Okay, so. How, uh, how long are we letting that cook for, Chef? Between 9 and 11 minutes. Excellent. Okay. And then we're going to cook that till it's just al dente. Yeah. Great. And for those who don't know, that's how, I mean, how would you describe al dente? Just so a little bit of a, a, a toothsome chew, right? When uh, you, you bite, is a little n not too hard, not too soft. Right. Shouldn't stick in your teeth, but it shouldn't be mush either. Yes. Somewhere in between. Great. Okay. So, should we get started on our sauce? Sure. All right. And where do we start with that? Olive oil. Okay. 
in the meantime, when they got um, a little hot, I'm going to chop it up, the tomato. Oh, perfect. These are the tomatoes that you, uh, that you prepped. Oh, yeah. They're beautiful. So much nicer to use a fresh product than a canned product when you can. I don't like nothing from the can. Nothing at all? No. So we're just doing a little bit of a, a dice here just to kind of break it up because this sauce doesn't cook very long, does it? No. It's very quick. That's nice. That's nice. That's another thing. A lot of times people think that sauces that you put on a pasta have to take a long time, but not all do. I mean, there are some very quick sauces. Only the tomato sauce. Right, like a marinara or a pomodoro sauce. Take me sometimes two days to make. Re wow. That's, that's a <laughs> that is a long time. But a simmer for two days, when you eat them, you cannot believe it. Really? Yeah, I learned how to make with my, don't throw this away. Oh, oh, oh not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, I, I, I learned how to make with my, my mother-in-law. Okay. The tomato sauce. She's the best cook I ever seen. Really? Yeah. And, 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 and your mother-in-law, she also Lebanese? She is from Lebanon. And, and, she makes, and she makes an Italian sauce? Yeah, because her husband was from Italy. Uh, okay, there you go. All right. Yeah, sort of, sort of have to. I think this is done. This is done. Okay. So we've got our, our perfectly cooked pasta ready to go. And do you want to turn that burner off or? No, because I'm going to put some. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, that's right, the, the butter trick. Yes. Right. Yeah, butter does make things taste really well, really good. That's what the French people said. Right. Everything with butter tastes better. That's right. And then also something else that sort of keeps it from sticking as well. It gives it a little bit of a little bit of oil. You don't use any of the pasta water in, in this sauce? No, because I have this. Right. Oh, that's good. Yeah, true. Now this one. Right. And why would you use pasta water when you have liquid gold? When depend of the pasta, the sauce that you make. She got a little bit dry. Right. I use the the, the, the pasta right. water. This is done. Okay. I'm gonna change it. Can I borrow this? Yes, you may. Thank you. All right. I put this in here. <laughs> And now I'm gonna put the garlic. All right. And this here looks like uh, chili peppers. Yes. Okay. And is that a, that's a serrano? Is yeah. That a red serrano. Yeah, the oh. little one. All right. So the garlic, you cannot cook them much because they got bitter if they got dark. Right. Right. Yeah. That's that. You can smell it. Nothing worse than like burnt garlic. Yeah. They cook very quick. You're pretty much starting from the beginning at that point. Or starting over, I should say. All right, here we go. And then what are we doing here? Just kind of, just kind of getting the, the flavor out, right? Yeah, now I'm gonna put the wine in, reduce a little bit. And that's just dry white wine, like a Chardonnay or yeah. a Pinot Grigio or something? Oh yeah, that smells really good. Yeah, I think also too, shellfish and the, the chili, the heat from the chili works really well with shellfish, don't yes, you? Yes, yeah. I don't put that much because some people they don't like too spicy. I'm good with it, but yeah, I've got I've got some uh, some some of the some of the, one of my children actually, he's he's got an aversion to spice. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but for the most part we're pretty good. I I, I, I really enjoy it. Like I said, I think that it, it's that it works so well with shellfish. Okay. I'm gonna put the tomatoes now. All right, our fresh tomatoes that that have been uh, seeded and peeled. Yeah, this is gonna take a, a few minutes. Okay. All right, just gonna bring that all together. Yeah. Now we're gonna put the salt and pepper. Okay. Gotta give it a little bit of seasoning. What kind of salt do you use? Do you use kosher? Kosher, always. Yeah, yeah that's right. 
much easier to handle, much easier to, uh, to season correctly, right? Yeah, because salt has a problem. You, 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 you can put it on, but you cannot take it out. <laughs> that is correct. And, and for some reason, table salt, that iodized salt, it's so easy. Things go from under season to too salty very fast. We don't, no, 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 well, yes, not with this. Not one. with that, right. Right here. So now this is reduced a little bit. Okay. Smells great. Smells great. And we haven't even added our, our liquid gold yet. Now. Now I'm going to put the oregano. Okay. Fresh oregano. Do you prefer that over the dried for this? If you use fresh, you have to use less than the dry one. The right. dry one's too concentrated. You have to put less than the right. yeah, less than the fresh one. Right. Those flavors concentrate. So the, and the fresh actually, orega fresh oregano is really pretty awesome. I, I I think it's 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 much more floral than the dried. Yeah. You know. Now I I, I don't use that much dry um, that dried um, spices or herbs. No. I like the fresh ones. Right. Right. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. And, and, you know, why not? I mean, we, we live in, in Cal Southern California. We get all of that. So yeah. might as well use the fresh. And then how long does that have to go before we add this? <coughs> Just a few minutes. It's almost done. Now I'm going to put a little bit butter on this. Oh, oh here it comes. Yes. On the sauce. Oh, I like that too. Not much. I like that too. Brings it all together and makes it nice and creamy. Make a little thickening. thickening. Right, thicken it a little bit, sure. Okay, so you're just yes. kind of showing how they just easily they, have, they come out of the shell there. It's very easy. Right. Great, yeah. You're just removing a little bit of the, the adductor yeah. Okay. There's a, well, if you can see it here, on the shell, this is called the adductor, and that is what fastens the actual muscle to the shell. So sometimes when you remove it, some of that comes with. And it, not that it, you can't eat it, um, it's just fairly, it's, it's chewy and fairly indigestible. But that's not nice. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to cut. So whenever you can take that off, that's, that's good. I mean, all, all shellfish have them. That's how they adhere themselves to the shell. Great, look at that. Looks to me like we're almost uh, ready to toss some pasta. The, re the recipe is six pounds of mussel. Which sounds like a lot. But I have three pounds here. Right, okay, that's okay, yeah. Half the recipe. Half the recipe, yeah. okay. Sounds like a lot, but actually mussels weigh a lot because they have shells. And that sounds like it might be expensive and it's really not. Mussels are actually fairly fairly inexpensive. Yeah, it is. Much more affordable than a lot of other shellfish. Okay. Oh, that's going to be great. All right, so I imagine you're just going to mix that around, let everything come together, and we're ready to go. Yeah. Perfect. I will allow you to do that. We'll get cleaned up, and we'll take a break. And on the other side, we're going to make a, a little bruschetta. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Alexa, how do you tell if asparagus is still good? If it's not moldy or slimy, it's okay to eat. Enable the new skill from Save the Food on your Amazon Alexa and help fight food waste. Bye bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water too. That'll probably help. You were probably gonna turn down the radio too, so you could focus, right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and I call a cab, a car, it. or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on them. Welcome back, I am in the kitchen with Chef Elizabeth Sercio. Uh, we have finished our pasta, which smells divine. And I cannot wait to, to get into that. <laughs> it smells so good. Uh, but now we're gonna make some bruschetta. Yes. All right. and. I've got the bread. I, I imagine you probably want me to start dealing with this. Please. You want me to cut it for you? Sure. Great. Tell us about the other ingredients we've got here. 
This mozzarella, they comes in the water. The, and it's the, the baby, the tiny mozzarella. Yeah, they have a little big size. When it's a little bigger than this, That's I the, cut in half. The chilangini. Yeah. Okay, those you get cut in half. But these, you don't have to cut at all. No. Perfect. So, but uh, I don't put them when they come out the water on the bread because they got soggy. So what I do is I dry them out first. S drain them and then put them on some paper towels yeah. and really get the, because there's a lot of moisture. They, they, they sit in water. Yes. So, yeah, that makes sense. You don't want that on. It, no. it, it defeats the purpose of toasting bread. It's going to taste horrible. It makes soggy, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we've got our, our mozzarella. We've got these, these beautiful little uh, baby tomatoes here, these grape tomatoes. Cher cherry. Cherry tomatoes. Yes. Okay. And a uh, little bit of olive oil, some balsamic that you've reduced down a little bit. Yes. Thickened it up over heat so it gets a little thick and syrupy. And then salt and pepper and basil. Yes. Great. All right. I will start on the bread. Um, I'm going to cut the, the tomatoes. All righty. And we're just doing like, what, about inch slices? Yes, please. Okay, you got it. All right. Yeah, I mean, bruschetta is something that I think most people, most people recognize and enjoy. You know, it's like, I don't know too many people who, you know, don't enjoy bruschetta. But, what pe I, you know, this is one way to do it. There's so many things you can do on top of toast. There's, a, there's a, has another recipe that I used to make for appetizer, like the bruschetta. Okay. I make the white sauce, bechamel a, sauce. A bechamel, okay. And I put some chopped um, spinach. Okay. And then I cut this, the, the bread like this, and I put on top the bread a little bit Parmesan cheese put in the oven. With the sauce? No, oh. I mix all together. Oh, okay. So the, so the the cheese goes in the sauce. No, no, the the bechamel mix with the spinach. Okay. And then you you spoon it up and put here on the top. Right. Okay. Little and then parmesan cheese on top. Oh, because that bechamel when it bakes it gets bubbly and brown. It's almost to die for. Right. Right. It's like um like in a lasagna how it bubbles up and makes yeah. like almost like cheese or like a yeah. like a moussaka like the Greeks make you know, good. That that's that that, that sounds great. I'm going to actually steal that from you, I think. <laughs> I'm going to give that a try. Yeah, I, when, when I was in Italy, um, I was always I was surprised at how many, you know, we're, we eat bruschetta like just, you know, sort of one way. But the Italians, they put a lot of different things on toast. Mushrooms, like a mushroom ragu. Yeah. You know, all sorts of things. <clears throat> and I like different stuff. Well, you know, and I think, too, what's great about this is that it's a really, it's a great you know, appetizer for, for a party or for, for, you know, if you're having people over, it's perfect. So we're just going to line these up here. All right. Get these going. Let you do your thing with the tomatoes. Look at that. I think we're going to fit perfectly. All right. I'm going to save these to dip in the juice of that pasta. Okay. <laughs> if that's okay with just you. Just put a little bit of olive oil on, on each of them. Okay. Just a few drops. Like that. Okay. Look at me. I'm cooking over here. All right. Just to get this nice and brown. All right. Kay. How'd I do? There we go. Thank you. Okay. Get this out of your way. Okay, so we're going cut side down there. <coughs> Two per slice. You can put a little three. Three. Okay, we're going three. Okay, and I think we're going to need, actually, I was one tomato off. There we go. Okay, we'll put them there. Perfect. All right, okay, so now this. Let me try, take this a little bit. Okay. Here for me, I'll put on the paper. Okay. Because these are still in the water. And then how long does this go into the oven for? Just to melt the cheese. Just to melt the cheese, okay. Yeah. And we're going to toast the bread very quick. 350? Yeah. Okay. That's 350 there. Yeah. Okay. So 350 until we melt the cheese. One more here. Okay. Oh, one more tomato. One okay. more here. I missed the tomato. There we go. And one more here. And one there, and one more there. Thank there you. Go. We need two more pieces of cheese over here. I think we're good to go. One more here. 
one more tomato. Uh, I say I kept that one at two because it was so small, but I'm going to use a small tomato for that. There we go. But we're going to keep them all the same here. We don't want anyone to feel cheated. Because <laughs> that's the thing. I, and, and, and when you cook for three kids, you give one of them a slice with two tomatoes on it and another one a slice of three, they're going to call you on that. There's no way they're going to let you get away with that. Okay, this is done. All right, beautiful. Into the oven it goes. Into the oven. Until the cheese melts. And then we're going to take a break. But when we come back, uh, we're gonna, you're going to, uh, over the break when they come out, you're going to dress them with, our, uh, with more, more olive oil, balsamic, and some basil. And salt and pepper. And salt and pepper. Perfect. All right, and then we'll eat. So uh, let me get this in the oven here because I am getting hungry. And we are going to take a break. So don't go away. We will be right back. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. Do you see that truck? Oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little bruised? Great. It's good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time. Welcome back. I'm in the kitchen with Chef Elizabeth Cercio, and as you can see, our uh, bruschetta has come out of the oven, and it's gorgeous. I mean, this is perfect bruschetta. That is the color that, like, uh, I if you looked it up in the dictionary, that's the color of th that bruschetta would be, by definition. And you can see the cheese is perfectly melted. Our, our tomatoes just starting to blister. And now you're going to finish this off, actually, uh, and show people what you do. I'm so going to put some salt and pepper. Here, I can slide that over a little bit closer. Thank see you. It's still hot, so be careful there, Chef. OK, a little bit, of, little bit of seasoning on that. Yeah, kosher is not a problem. Right. I'll give you a hand, actually. Thank you. That. OK. Yeah, and what's nice is I love when things like this, when, when, when you season warm things, it opens up the oil and the pepper, and you smell it. Yeah. Love it. OK, and then a little bit of olive oil. Extra virgin. Extra virgin. All right. And then you're going to finish it off with your uh, reduced balsamic. This is sweet. <coughs> Yeah, it does. It gets very sweet. Actually, if you reduce it enough, you can almost use it as like syrup. Yeah, you could th this it one is like a syrup. Right, right. But it, you can reduce it to the point where it's like you, you put it on berries or you put it on, on cakes. Uh, cakes, right, like pancakes even. See how thick it is? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's going to be good. Beautiful. As you can see, we have our, our pasta here that just smells incredible. And I get to dig into all of this. Yeah, that is nice and thick. Look at that. It is. Look like a syrup. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then we finish that off with a little bit of basil. Yeah. Just got to give it a little green. The Italians, you, you notice a lot of things, a lot of their food has the colors of their flag. Have you noticed that? Yeah. <laughs> the red, green, white, and red green, green, right? Green. Yeah. Seem to work that into everything really well. Well, but uh, Italian food is, is the one of the best food. Oh, it's great. The it's whole great. world, right? It's simple, but it's clean and, and just delicious. And it's, it's really very much ingredient driven, you know, because of the fact that that area of the world, everything grows. You know, so when they sit there and they tell you we have the best tomatoes in the world or we have the best artichokes in the world, or they mean true. it. They mean they're, they're, they're right. That's you, can't, true. you can't argue with it. And then, of course, you have the, 
the artisan purveyors who would make Parmigiano, Reggiano, and prosciutto and things like that. And you know, have you tried to eat the pasta that you make inside the, the cheese? Oh. No, I know what you're talking about. I've heard of that, but I've never had that. Oh, my God, you'll have to try. It's so okay. good. Okay, so what she's referring to is they'll actually do a pasta where they'll take a wheel of Parmigiano-Reggiano that has been hollowed out, and the pasta is made inside of there, so it picks up the, the cheese. And from what I understand, it's incredible. I've never tried that, but oh that's, my God, it's that's very bucket good. list stuff right there. That is great. All right, well, I think I'm going to dig into this because I can't wait any longer. Um, it smells so good. I'm going to give that a little bit of a toss. I'm going to make sure I get a muscle in here. And give this a nice little twirl. All right. Mm. That is so good. Wow. You know, it has a bit of a sort of a chipino flavor to it, you know, the, the soup um, in San Francisco, the fisherman's soup that has the tomatoes and all the different seafood, but it, it's a, it, it sort of invokes that a little bit, but this is so delicious. But it's not overpowering. Not at all. It's, and you know, it's funny, you think of pasta, people think of pasta as being a heavy dish, but when you have it made right, it's really not. It's really not. Mm. <coughs> Chef, that's delicious. Thank you. I really like that. Okay. I'll know some bruschetta. Please. All right. Wow. Sweet with the tomatoes, the cheese, the saltiness, and perfectly toasted bread. You can't go wrong with this meal. I'm stealing this. I'm, I'm very happy to see we enjoy the food. I know. <laughs> we spoke about it on the break. But you got to kind of like cook for people who, <laughs> <coughs> who enjoy actually eating your food, right? Chef, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. It's this my pleasure wonderful. to be here. I hope you come here. and visit us, visit us again. Thank you very much. You know, it just goes to show you we really are cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. On behalf of myself, Chef Sercio, everybody here at Community Cooking, thank you for watching. We will see you next time. All right. I'm going back in. Going to do this. <laughs> If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m., rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.